guys, it's Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com and today is the day we are going to do Cliffs of Dover. Now, we did Cliffs of Dover, I did Cliffs of Dover a long time ago. Actually, I filmed those videos in 2009. Um, so you've probably seen my previous instruction videos on Cliffs of Dover. Um, that was really kind of for just private students. Those didn't make it on YouTube for a couple of years later and they're horrible. They're not nothing I'm very proud of. So a song that's as great as this needs a proper treatment. So I'm gonna redo it. A few notes are gonna be different here or there. It's gonna be all in one video, a lot more succinct. And I think I'm a better online instructor. God, I hope so um, at this point. And uh, so I'm gonna kind of redo it, but we're gonna go through the whole track, every single section, every single note. So it's gonna be a lot involved because it is an absolute beast. There are specific things that Eric Johnson does in his playing um, that if you want the fast runs in Cliffs of Dover to sound correct, um, and some of the chord voicings, everything you need to kind of play it like he does. And um, if you don't understand his style, it's kind of hard to make it sound like it. So I'm going to cover that too. And if you like Eric Johnson's style, I have a course on the style of Eric Johnson's playing as well too. It's been on my academy forever. Speaking of the academy, I've got a link to my academy in the description below. So check that out. Um, so you can um, check out all my courses, including my uh, Eric Johnson course. But I got courses for complete beginners and more advanced players from technique, improvisation, your training theory, you name it go live every Saturday with them too. Hey guys, before I get into this lesson video, I just wanna thank Vidami for sponsoring this video. They have sponsored multiple videos of mine and I'm very appreciative uh, that they support my work and helps me bring these videos to you guys. And they have an amazing pedal that I've been using for years. I used their original Vidami and now I've switched to the Vidami Blue, which is like Bluetooth version of it. But either one that you have is just an amazing tool for practice. So what the Vidami does is it allows you to control any video on YouTube and many platforms of video platforms across the internet, including My Guitar Academy, you can control the video hands-free. And that's the key. You're playing guitar, you're practicing guitar. You don't want to be touching a mouse and grabbing all the stuff to, to be able to slow the video down, which you can do on YouTube. You can do it all with this pedal, very intuitively, by the way. You don't even realize you're using the pedal after about like 10, 15 minutes. I use it almost every day now to transcribe music or practice music. You can also do it with just files on your computer, like on your hard drive. You don't have to uh, be on the internet at all. But when you're on YouTube, it is invaluable for whatever you're learning. You can loop sections, slow them down, speed them up, whatever you want. So you're gonna find this is gonna limit a, a lot of your frustration when you're watching guys like me or any other YouTubers you like, or whatever, whatever you're watching. I don't care if it's a cooking video, it's gonna be invaluable to keep your hands free and be able to intuitively use a pedal to control the video. The new Vidami Blue pedal also works as like a page turner with your favorite page turner software, or it'll even control your doll, which is amazing when you're recording music. So please click the links below and, and go check it out. And thank you once again, Vidami, for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's start with this intro. I'm not gonna dial too much, dive too much into the tone. Uh, there is really great resources to achieving Eric Johnson's tone um, on the web. Really great resources that'll make sure um, that you'll never be able to dial it in. Because <laughs> he's actually using two different guitars for this. He's, most of the guitar is done on a humbucker guitar. So I'm, I got an Eric Johnson Strat here. Uh, it's the same Strat I used, you know, many years ago. It looks a little bit different because it's been beat to hell. But the, uh, um, he uses a, uh, a 335, Gibson 335, for a ES-335 for most of the track, except for the intro and like the first 10 seconds of the solo. The rest of it's actually a humbucker guitar, and then the Strat. So it's like, whatever. Um, sounds amazing. So I'm not really, I'm trying to get something that kind of sounds fun to play with. I'm not trying to dial in specifically his tone. There are better resources than me for that kind of stuff. So uh, you guys know, I don't really kind of dive too much into tone. I just like, let's just get something that's fun to play with and learn the song, because that's fun to me. <laughs> anyway, so let's jump right into this, uh, the intro, what I just played. Um, so the first phrase. <laughs> So we're gonna stop there where I can have a good, kind of good teaching point at least. So we're gonna start obviously with the open E string or in standard tuning, and then you're gonna kind of overbend the that 15th fret on the high E. So it's kind of a whole side bend, and it kind of starts going a little bit past it. And then we have this. So that's gonna be 15, 12 on the high E string. 14 on the high E, 15 on the B. Then roll a 12 from the high E over to 12 on the B. Now, I'm also gonna say, going a little bit quicker than I usually do through solos. Uh, 
if you're, if you're really, if you're, if you're serious about playing uh, Cliffs of Dover, you probably don't need me to kind of hold your hand through every single thing that I do. So uh, I will talk about specific picking things that is very specific to how Eric plays it. Um, but uh, I'm not gonna kind of like, we're, we're not gonna spend 20 seconds on each note, sorry. So. Now from here we have this. So that's just kind of that standard blues lick, 15, uh, 12 on the high E string, pull off 15 to 12 on the B, into a whole stat bend of the 14th fret there on the G. So we have this so far. All right, then we start the fast lick. So the next phrase is. So that gonna, that's going to start here on the 12th fret on the B, 12, 15, then 12 on the high E string, up to 15. So we're going to do some throw some pull-offs in here. Now that's the thing about Eric is he's got he'll throw some um, economy picking in there, which we'll talk about, but he also throws a lot of pull-offs in. So a lot of these fast runs. They're not straight picked. Um, they're not even just economy picking and alternate picking. There are a lot of pull-offs thrown in there, and they're muted a little bit in the, with, the, with the palm, which gives the impression that they're picked. Um, so you can see this even more now. It's more. I feel like if I watch a video of Eric playing in 1990, he's picking a few more of the notes than he is today. Um, but he, uh, he, I think he just starts liking the more legato -y type sound as he as he went. The time went on, the decades passed, but um, he's not as aggressive, I guess, as he used to be. Uh, but anyway, so if we um, if we step into this and kind of play it like he did back in the day, we have a little, we have that, we get to that top, the 15, you're going to pull off fi uh, 14 to 12 on the um, high E string, and then you're going to do your first little economy pick. So that right there is just 15 on the B, and then you're gonna play 14 on the high E, but you're, it's kind of, just kind of like uh, picking a, a cross down, down. And then once again, he's gonna pull off to 12. And then uh, 15, 12 on the B. Back to 15 on the B, up to 12 on the high E string, and then pull off 15 to 12 on the B, over to 14 on the G. So that's really kind of the whole fast lick, and then it goes into some bluesy things. So it looks like this. So from there, when you get to that 14 on the G, then you're going to do this. So it's kind of this same little common blues lick here, which is going to be a pull off from 15 to 12 on the B string into a whole stat bend of the 14 on the G. You're going to do that twice. Then uh, release that bend, pull off to 12, and then you're going to play 14, tw 14, 12 on the D. So a lot of uh, times when you see people play this, I think myself included, I play this D note here because he does a shift right there. But if you listen really close to the recording, he plays the note and then he plays it again. So he, he plays it, he goes like that, and then he starts this run down here by doing the same thing. And that's something he does a lot when he transitions to different positions. And when he wants to go kind of seamlessly go to a new position without you really knowing that he's going there, um, he he plays a unison. Uh, so that's what he's doing here. So we have this little. When you have that right there, you're going to quickly go back and start this next. So that's kind of the next list. Now, this one, it's kind of hard to pick up exactly what he's doing here. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. But if you want to make it easier, you're going to economy pick it like he does a lot. And a little bit of legato on top. So, 
So we have basically this. We have seven on the G and then five on the B. So I'm doing a down, down. So after you go to that five on the B, you have that eight on the high E, I'm sorry, eight on the B. That. Down, down, up. Then um, down stroke here on the fifth fret on the high E string. And then you get to pick seven, pull off to six, pull off to five. And then you can have this, um, eight, five on the B, and then that same seven, five, seven on the G to five on the B with a kind of a mini sweep. Down, down, down on each one. Then up stroke here at the seventh fret there on the B. So it is. And then we have the last descending thing, which is a pretty consistent loop. So that right there is what he's doing is he's doing a series of, of fives. So we talk about, you hear Eric Johnson's fives all over the place. And this is what he's doing here, this little descending section. Um, so we, we're going to be doing, a, starting with a little mini sweep, you know, a little economy pick. So we're going to start here at the fourth fret on the G. And you're gonna down down into the fifth fret there on the B string. Now, now either way you want to do it here. The picking, you can pull off the notes, which he does a lot. You can kind of sound like kind of sounds more authentic if he's pulling them off. Uh, and then we have the ones where we're actually picking each note. So it'd be very light picking though. It's heavily palm muted. So. Basically, what you want to do is you play four into the five on the four on the G and the five on the B, then down to three on the B, then then four two on the G, over to the fifth fret there on the D. So that's the five. So this is just kind of a setup note, and then one two three four five, and then one two three four five. So from there we have four two. After you play that uh, fifth fret on the D, you go four two on the G, five two on the D, over to um, the fifth fret on the A. So, it's so you can go down down up down up down down up down up down, or down down pull. So. if you want so just like that so you continue that lick when you get down that fifth fret there on the a then you're going to roll over to the fifth fret on the do uh on the d string to kind of it sounds like you're starting um another group of five but he doesn't complete it so he starts after that fifth fret on the a you roll back over i'm going down down into that fifth fret on the d two then five two on the A, here, what he does, he does end it with some uh, pull-offs. When he's got that note there, he's playing the second note on the um, A string, the B, he's gonna roll over. He's gonna basically roll over and go to the second fret there on the D string. Pull off two to zero, then two to zero on the A, and then you play three zero on the low E. So we have this. So right there, that's a bend and release at the eighth fret there on the B string. And then he kind of starts bending it back up uh, before he kills it. Like that. And then we have the really cool open voice triad sequence. All right, sounds impressive, but it's, it's actually not incredibly hard to play. Um, once you get under your fingers. So it does require kind of a stretch. So we're going to start here with this. Uh, it's basically an A minor arpeggio. So we start here with the third fret on the, on the uh, A string, seven on the D, and fifth fret there on the B string. Then the same thing, two frets higher. And then when you get to that top note, you're at the seventh fret there, so you're 
you're gonna take that note up on the seventh fret and move it up to the eighth. Then play 10 on the B, seven on the high E, back to that 10 on the B string, then play eight, slide up to 10, and then go eight over to 12 on the B. So I put some kind of vibrato on that top note. All right, from there, we're gonna go back to the, uh, the same shape we did before, but it's at the 10th row. So 10 on the A, 14 on the D, 12 on the B. And then into, so we're kind of picking across the same three strings each time, right? So after this one, which is an E minor arpeggio, up to another voice, uh, another inversion of an A minor arpeggio, which is, Right here, we're going to play um, the 12th fret there on the A, 14 on the D, and 13 on the B. The, I'm sorry. So the next shape, let that note ring a little bit, and you're going to slide into this next one. You're going to slide into the 14th fret there on the A string. So this is a, a G major arpeggio in first inversion. So it's gonna be 14th fret there on the A, 17th on the D, and then 15th fret on the B. Now he picks this, he plays this a little different, these top, these major ones, these up here. Um, so what they are first is, it's a C major arpeggio here. The um, 15th fret there on the A, uh, 17th on the D, 17 on the B, and then the same tune two frets higher. Now he plays it like this. Because his fingers, he probably doesn't like the cramped feel of that. The pink, I like playing the pinky on top. But he uses his middle finger on top. Kind of does like that. Probably because he likes to add some nice vibrato to it. So after this, Kind of resolve it to the 15th fret there on the high E after you finish this D major to that note right there. The 15th fret on the high E. And then from there, we start the hybrid picking lick, which looks like this. All right, so if you're not used to hybrid picking, you're screwed. <laughs> it's because it's a fast one, but it's a really great, it's fun lick to practice. Um, so it's basically the same note up top. So with my middle finger, I'm plucking that uh, 15th fret there on the high E. This is a G note. And then underneath it, I'm kind of changing the note that, it, that you're picking along with it. So you basically pick the top note, and then you're going to pick the note underneath it. In this case, it's going to be it's going to start out at the 19th fret there on the B. So pick the top note, pluck, and then pick with a downstroke 19 on the B. And then you're going to go back and pick the top note with your middle finger again. And then 19 on the G you're going to pick. Then pluck the top note, then 19 on the D. Pluck the top note. And then now 17 on the D. Then pluck the top note, 17 on the G. Pluck the top note, 17 on the B. So it's kind of like a pattern. So you repeat that twice. And then we're gonna abbreviate the pattern a little bit. Instead of going across three strings, we just go across two. Um, so it's gonna be like this. So that's just the 19 on the B, to the 19 on the G, to the 17 on the G, 17 on the B. So we never go down to the D string. Then you do that twice. So all together, sorry. And then we're going to end it with a lick that has a lot of economy picking in it. It looks like this. All right.
right, so I kind of slowed it down a lot from the intro, but we're gonna basically play. Um, this one, you gotta really kind of feel that, you gotta keep the, the, the feel of the, the pattern going. And it's, I gotta do it, I kinda let the weight of my arm kinda guide those, those double downstrokes. Um, it's the only way I can kind of strive it. Because um, if, if I did like a small, it's like a bigger movement. I'd, it's the only way I can kind of feel it. But anyway, the first one, you don't really need to economy pick it because it's kind of slow. So the lick starts out like, and then it starts speeding up. But it's good to go ahead and start doing it because uh, you get the feel of it before it starts picking up speed. So that kind of helps me. So even those first few notes are, you can just alternate pick if you wanted to. Um, I recommend sticking with the picking that I'm, I'm gonna show you here. So we're gonna start here. The 19th fret there on the B. So down, down into this 17th fret there on the high E, down to the 15. So those three notes. So here it is. And then once again, 19 on the B, two downstrokes in a row, into the 15 on the high E. So here it is. And then up on the 19 on the high E, 17 downstroke, and then up on the 15. Then we do the same lick that we did uh, to start, which is that 19 on the B, double down to the 17th fret on the high E to 15 with an upstroke on the high E. So we so, so when you get done with that, done with that, you're gonna go over to the we're gonna start taking it uh, down to a different string set. We're gonna go 19, 15 on the B. So, so 19, 15 on the B, so down, up, and then another down, down, kind of mini sweep from 17 on the G, roll over to 17 on the B. Then I play 17, 14 on the uh, G string over to 17 there on the, the D. So we have this. And then here we're going to start this repetitive lick. So we just ended with a downstroke. We're going to go once again, go down, down to start the next. So he's doing that, that fives lick. But the thing he's doing here is he's not taking it across strings. He's keeping it across the same three strings. What that requires you to do is do a string skip across the little mini sweep. So it's kind of like a double downstroke, but you're skipping a string in between, which is weird. So we basically have this. So it's weird. Uh, it's, it requires you kind of really kind of mute that middle string, and you're also got to have a really bouncy hand to, to do it. So after you went to this note, sorry. When you got to that note, from here you're gonna start the fives. So you get that downstroke into a downstroke at the 16th fret on the G, up on the 14th fret, and then play 17, 14 on the D, going down up, and then 17 on the A, and that's when you get it down, down, but across string. So you kind of kind of bounce across. Keep a really loose wrist. You hear Eric Johnson talk about balancing across strings all the time. So after you've done that like three times, he grabs this note. He does it with his thumb, but it's a, the 15th fret on the low E string, and then uh, a pinch harmonic at the 18th fret, kind of a bend and release, and then bend again at the 18th fret on the B string. That harmonic's like right between my middle and and uh, neck pickup. And that is it for the intro. It takes forever. Just it's a lot of notes, but you know, uh, crank that thing out at the music store. Um, they won't throw you out. I can tell you that. Anyway, now we can get to verse one. So this verse one now has a thing that's a little bit deceptive in it. 
that I feel like I'm going to play a little bit different than I used to. Uh, you see people play that main riff in the verse many different ways, um, but I think I got it pretty pretty close to what Eric's actually doing here. So let me play through the first verse. It's kind of my first main riff in the first verse right here, and then I'll show you how to play it. So here we go. <laughs> start with this very, very, very tricky riff. Now, why is he not going? Which you'll see people do. A couple reasons why it's not done like that, and you'll see people play it like that. Uh, one is you're not letting the melody note ring out. So, you gotta hear that, and while still keeping that top note, and having that. Now, what's going on underneath this? So let me show you why he's playing it this way. He's, he's trying to create like a percussive effect, yet still letting the notes ring out. So it's difficult because you have to keep the open, the, the G string open without muting it. So we have the fifth fret there on the D, the open G, the third fret there on the B, and the third fret on the high E string. And what he's doing is he's muting the D string, but he's picking across those four strings. So he's gonna actually first start with this, just hitting that D string. So it's muted, you're holding the fifth fret. So he's picking that note, and then he starts the figure, which is picking the high E to the B, that melody notes on the B string, open G, letting it ring, then the same note doubled, but it's held at the fifth fret there on the D string and muted. So you have the best of both worlds. It sounds open, but it sounds muted. It's, it, it really kind of brings the riff out if you get it, but it's, it's not easy to do. So it, also, that's, pick up the, I'm not going, I'm just going to pick it across in my, got to get that little, you got to get to that kind of jump feel, so, so you keep that going while then moving up to the fifth fret on the B string, and then the seventh fret on the B. And you'll see him readjust his hand position when he goes up there. Why? Because he wants to be able to keep that arc in the middle finger so he can, he can still keep those two Gs against each other. So it goes all the way through three, five, seven, five on the B. But it's the same pattern repeated. It's that note on the B string changing. So that's going to be uh, sliding five to seven on the G, over to eight on the B, seven on the seven on the high E string. So this hybrid picking here. We have you're picking the tenth fret there on the A string while plucking the eighth fret on the B and the tenth fret on the high E string. So this and then. Kind of the same thing, slide five, seven on the G, eight on the B, seven on the high E string, 10 on the high E string. And then more hybrid picking, which is 10th fret on the D, and then eighth fret there on the B in the high E string. And then, so that's eight on the high E, bend and release the, the 10 on the B, and then the eighth right there on the B string. So we have this. Back to that riff. And after you've done that riff once, we're gonna... kind of goes down here, which is a bar here um, from the high E string across to the, the A string at the third fret. 
kind of keeps the same rip. But it really picks up. Kind of pick the third fret down the A string and then high E, B, and then a couple times in that third fret on the A uh, again. And then up to the fifth fret on the A, back to the high E string, back to the fifth fret on the A, and then move up to the fifth fret there on the high E string. And back to this. Same one we did before, the 10th fret on the A, 8 on the B, uh, 10 on the high string. Then we have this. So a little pinch harmonic in there. So that right there, that little phrase, is going to be 12 on the D, 12 on the G, 12 on the B. Kind of roll across it. So after you get across those three 12s, play 15 on the B, 12. 14 on the high E string, and then back to the 15th fret of the B. And you can tell what Eric picks. A lot of his pinch harmonics are right kind of in the middle between um, uh, the, the bridge and the middle pickup. So and that's where you can find that uh, pinch harmonic at the 15th fret. And then we have this. So that right there is. 15 on the A, 17 on the uh, D string, then 14 on the G, 15 on the B, up to the 12 on the high string. And then, so from there, it's sliding into 14 on the G string, kind of bend and release, down to that 12, and then back to that little figure, so it is. And kind of up to that top note. And then we're gonna end that first verse with that C power chord to the D power chord. All right, then we get to the first chorus. This first chorus doesn't have a bunch of fills added to it yet. Those come in later, but the first chorus is kind of straightforward, looks like this. Back to that verse. So that's going to start here with this. The 14th fret here on the D string. Slide down to 12, back to 14. So here, he's outlining this first arpeggio. So this is kind of built around chord tones. This first one is built around an A minor triad. So it's uh, the 17th fret there on the G, uh, 14th on the D, and 14 on the G. Then what are you going to do is kind of do something based around a G major triad. So it's just a chord progression he's playing through. Uh, so after this little thing to set it up, we're going to have, and then play that, 15, that 17th fret on the G again, slide down to 16, and then you're going to play 12 on the D to 12 on the G. Back to that 16 on the uh, G string, and you're going to slide down here. To it. And this is the notes of the a D major arpeggio. So it goes basically from an A minor to a G major to a D major arpeggios. So over here, it goes 12 on the D, 11 on the G, to 14 on the G, back to 12 on the D, and then 11, 12, 14, and then slide up to 16 again. So it is. So. When you get back up to that 16 again, and it's going to be kind of do the same. Oh, sorry, a little bit different ending. So we have this. When you get to here, here, play that 16, 12 on the D, 12 on the G, 16, slide down to 14 again, then 12, 
the same kind of 12 on the D, 11 on the G, to 12 on the G, and then pick that again, pull off to 11, down to 9, and then play 12, 9 on the D. So this. And now the first time you hear it, he doesn't do this little setup note, which you, you'll hear a lot kind of for the rest of the song of this. But in the first time you hear it, you just hear the goes straight to the top note again. So it's kind of starts the same way. Well, when we get down to the D. He goes up to this top note to the D, the octave. So it now he kind of goes, he kind of does it with his pinky, which is crazy. But he he uh, he plays that 12 on the D, 11 on the G, 14 on the G, and then grabs that 15th fret there on the B string. And then we kind of then we kind of start the same way. So that's kind of. 11 on the G, 14 on G, slide up, cross that G arpeggio again, same thing. And then when we get down here, slide down to that 14, we're gonna go 12 on the D string, and then play 11 on the G, pull, pull off 12 to 11, over to 14 on the D, and to a bend of the 15th fret on the B string. So let me play through it real quick. All right, now from there we can start. The same thing again, but then you're going to do that little pickup note at the 12th fret on the A string before you start it over. And then we're going to have this little ending here, which is just um, that 12 to 11 pull off on the G, down to 9, then go over to 9 on the D, slide down to 7, and then pick across the 7th fret. You might want to use a different finger, because you got to get down here real quick. But that's just picking across this uh, D major arpeggio, 7 on the G, I mean D, G, and the B kind of plummeted. All right, then it gets to verse number two. It kind of starts with that same riff, looks like this. So it starts with that same little riff here. And then what you're gonna do is hit, him, hit the open uh, G string muted real quick. That's one of the things like when you isolate the track, you can hear that, oh, there's a little G note hidden there. And then 14, 17 on high E string, over to 12 on the D, to 12 on the high E string, then 10 on the high E, pull off 12 to 10 on the B. And then, and that's gonna be tw uh, seven on the high E string, pull off 10 to eight on the B, over to seven on the G, so it is, and then uh, kind of back into the. Now it picks up the riff here, you start with that muted uh, G note here, but it picks up the, picks up the riff kind of halfway through, so when you come out of this, you're gonna start it. One with the melody notes on the, the fifth fret there, the B string. And then from there we had this, jumps into that, which is 12 on the D, 14 on the G, 15 on the B, then 14, 15 on the high E string. And then, kind of that same thing we did at the beginning in the, uh, at the, in the first verse, that slide into seven, eight on the B, seven on the high E string, 
That's right. When you get to this note, you just play that chord that we did before. So we have uh, from there after you play this chord, it's kind of picking up the energy of everything and the melodies. So that's sliding 10 to 12 on the D, over to 12 on the G, 12 on the B, 14 on the, I'm sorry, 15 on the B, then 12, 14 on the high E string. And then, so that's a little bit different than the one that before did that. This one is a little bit funkier. So it's just, uh, 15, uh, 15 on the A, 17 on the D, then play 15, 17 on the B. And then slide into 14 on the G, kind of a bend release, down to 12. Back into that main riff, and then... So that right there is... So that's 9 on the G, 8 on the B, to seven on the high E. You're gonna pull off eight to, I mean, 10 to eight on the high E. Over to seven on the G. So after you play seven on the G, you pull off eight to seven on the high E, eight on the B, nine, seven on the G. Back to that eight on the B. From there, So that right there, I used to play like this. But there's a note, there's a little starting note there that I missed because when you isolate the track, you can hear it, but it's kind of hard to hear otherwise. But it makes it much easier to lock into the rhythm of it uh, when you know it's there. So, so that's 17 on the A, heavily palmed, over to 14 on the G. Then. 15, 17 on the B string. Up to 14 on the high E string. Then place 17, 15 on the B. Then back up to 17. Then 14 on the high E string. 17 on the high E. Back down to 14. Then 17, 15 on the B. So it is. From here. From there, you're gonna play 17 on the B, 15, uh, 17 on the high E, not the 14. And then a bend and release at the 17 on the high E string into a bend at the 18th fret there on the B. And then, so we have this one. And then that same little ending we keep putting there. Same little riff, and then you're gonna end it instead of the, these two power chords. He ends it with this kind of different voicing of a C power chord, which is the fifth fret there in the G, and you're gonna bar the eighth fret across the B and the high E. And then that same D power chord on the fifth fret. All right, so let's take a look at the second chorus now. This has a quick little sweet, uh, sweet pick lick in it, but for the most part, it's pretty similar to the first chorus. So it's like this. Takes us to the bridge there, a little bit different ending. Uh, so it starts with kind of the same thing. And then here we have this little lick. So that's gonna be kind of the only new thing here. It's just 12 on the D, 14 on the G. And 15 on the B. Then 14, 15 on the high E. And then uh, Eric liked, likes to combine pentatonics 
with sweeps, arpeggios. Um, and then he'll uh, hammer on a couple of notes and it just sounds like magic. So what's going on here is he's gonna be picking uh, 15, seven, uh, 14, 17 on the A string and then 14, 17 on the D, but this, I'm gonna be picking this with up, starting with an upstroke, up, down, up. Why am I doing that? Because when you play this downstroke, the second downstroke there, that happens on the D string. So up, down on the 14, 17 on D, that's the first note of a, a sweep. Which is playing 17 on the D, 16 on the G, 15 on the B. So that's just the three string, three string uh, sweep, downward sweep. So you're gonna have to start, so you kind of want them, all the notes to sound even. It's not like, <laughs> it's not that. You want the, the sweep to be the same tempo as the picked. Well, that's how it sounds really cool. So up, down, up, down, down, down. Then I'm gonna hammer on the 17th fret there on the B string. And then play 15, hammer on 19. And then 17 on the B with that pinch harmonic once again, kind of right between those, the bridge and the, um, not another, I'm sorry, the neck and the middle pickup. And then back to the same melody. So here, instead of having to go back to here, it goes to the bridge and this chord, this little G power chord. So the bridge got a, some really cool stuff in it as well. It sounds like this. So that bridge has a lot of everything in it. Some crazy legato-y, liquidy licks, some really crazy, uh, some nice hybrid picking, some massive stretches, quick chord changes. Um, so a lot of cool stuff. So we're gonna start here with. So that's bar, you're gonna hold the fifth fret across the D, G, and the B, and then you're gonna hold the, uh, uh, eighth fret there on the B string, and then the seventh on the G. So it's a G power chord. And then you kind of got to rotate the note in the middle on that G string, which will catch with the bar. So he does it like that first, and then he'll jump back here. He grabs this low G with his thumb, and then you're gonna uh, play this. But do it here. So that's playing the third fret on the uh, B and, and third fret on the high E. And you're kind of rotating that note on the B string between the third and the first fret. And, and you can have the open G in there, in there if you want. So like this. And then comes probably ooh, my favorite lick in the whole piece. It just kind of just. It sounds just like a waterfall of notes. It's just very, very cool. What's like this? So that lick is gonna be um, low. So it's a, mostly done legato. You're gonna play the 14th from the high E string, hammer on 17. So. 14 to 17, then pull off to 12. Over to 15, pull off to 12 on the B string. Over to the 14th fret there on the 
the G string. Now here, it's a quick bend and release at the 15th fret there on the B string. Then pull off 12. Then pull off 14, 11 on the uh, G string. Then you're gonna shift down uh, from 12, 12, pull off to 10 on the B string, and then 11, pull off to 9 on the G, and then 12, pull off to uh, 9 on the D. Now here, I used to grab this note here and then shift this back. That's how I used to play it. But when I watch Eric play this very last, like he actually shifts down, at least when he played it back near, closer to the time he recorded the, the thing, because he, Eric's always adding things to it, so he might not play it the same way now, but um, he kind of, when he got here, he just basically shifted over and used the same finger to grab the, because sometimes you can see that note could be done with an open B, because he does the transition with the open string a lot too. But that would make the lick even more awkward, um, and that B would really stick out. So I kind of see him do like, even though he's ending it with that index finger at the ninth fret of the D string, he comes over and plays the, ninth, the uh, third, seventh fret there on the B string. And then it continues kind of the same look. So he's the seventh fret there on the B, instead of, well, like I used to play it. He's like, you can, you can, it seems like it would make more sense to be here. But I see him go back and grab that one. So however way you want to grab that F sharp, seventh fret on the B, then pull off nine to seven on the G, nine to seven on the D, nine on the, play nine on the A, and then the open D string. And then we get back down to the uh, chords. And then here's something we I uh, kind of pick up uh, on the isolated track that I didn't know he was doing before. And then when I double checked and watched him play it live, he's still doing it live too. Which is instead of going that, he goes. So he's grabbing that kind of bass note real quick. So that's going to be the 10th fret on the A, the 7th fret a couple times on the G, then up to the 9, and then 8, 10, and then kind of a slide back down into the 10 from the, from the 11, then back to 8, 10, over to 7 on the high string. And then into this monster chord, which is um, just a big G power chord as well, which is the seven, I'm sorry, five on the D, seven on the G, eight on the B, 10 on the high E string. And he's still keeping that. So you have to keep that bar going behind it. Not easy. back into this melody. So that melody starts the same. When it gets to there, it goes up to the high E string. Eight, hammer on 12, pull off to 10. And then pull off eight to seven on the high E string, over to the um, eighth fret on the B. Pull off nine to seven, back to the eight on the B. So with this, um, so I'm mean, actually from this uh, from the beginning. So after this little guy leg, this will then we into the melody. And then back down to back down to the thumb version of that voicing, which he's gonna start by the way with the melody note on the first fret of the B when he comes back down here. And, and back and then back to the same melody we did for. And 
then back into that same chord. And then back here. All right, so kind of piece that together. Then we have this little section that ends it. So that's, that's the ninth right there on the D, over to seven on the high E string, then at least the tenth right there on the B, down to eight, kind of pull off to eight, over to seven on the G, back to that eight. And then, so I'm borrowing the fifth fret here from the D string across to the high E string. And I'm basically gonna play in that kind of. I basically go on picking the notes I'm picking with my with the pick is just the D string, the fifth fret, and the fifth fret on the G, back to the D string, fifth fret, and then the seventh fret on the G. But in between each one, I'm picking that top note, hyper picking that with the middle finger. So just pick, hybrid, hybrid, back down the D, hybrid, and then that seventh fret there on the G. And then back to that same, and then back to the same thing underneath it. And the same thing again. Except you're gonna stop here at the eight. So it's kind of repetitive. And then here we're gonna start these like really kind of fast chords. So it's gonna start with that G power chord we started the bridge with. Then you're gonna play a little melody. Five, seven on the high E string, and then play um, this. It's gonna be basically the fifth fret across the D and the G, and then the eighth fret there on the B. For this. And back to that 5, 7 on the high E string again. But now, just to make things more interesting, he's going to still keep this bar here at the 5th fret, but play 8th fret on the B, 10th on the high E string. And then play 7, 5 on the, on the high E, down to those last chords of the wheel. That last chord being 5 on the D and G again with the 8 on the B. Let's try this. And then when it, which is just a D sus four chord, which is an open D six, I mean, open D second fret there on the G, third on the B, third on the high E string, and then fifth fret on the A, third on the B, third on the high E. All right, now we have made it to the solo. Let's, you know, the thing is pretty much a solo the whole time, right? Uh, so let me play through the solo for you real quick, and then I'll show you how to play it note for note. So that has got uh, some insane stuff in it. Very melodic though, it's just one of those things that just flows. This whole song is just, every lick, every fill, everything is just like perfectly placed. And you can tell he took years writing it and just developing, developing, because it just, it's just such a perfect piece of music. All right, so we're gonna start here. So since we're coming out from here, the bridge section, which kinda ended down here, I'm gonna play this E here. When you listen to it, it almost sounds like, like there's just a really kind of a palm muted E there. You could do all right here, but I think he's, um, you know, since you're, we're just coming from here, we're just, you might just grab that E there first and then bump up here. So it's the seventh fret there on the A string up to the 12 and then 14 on the D and then 14 on the G and you're gonna let that note ring. So I'm kind of palm muting all the notes. 
until I get to that top note. And then we have some vibrato on that. So from there, so if you get to, to here, you're gonna go to the 14 on the D, 12 on the G, bend and release that 14th fret there on the G, back down to 12. Back to that 14 on the D, and then you're gonna slide 15 to uh, 17 on the, you can, some people will play it like that I've seen, but it, it sounds like there's a slide there. So you're gonna slide from 15 to 17 on the B. So we have this. And then come back down here. So you can see that little unison thing again that he kind of takes advantage of. So we're back here. And we had that little lick, which is the 12th fret on the high E string. Pull off 15 to 12 on the B. So over to 14 on the G. And then we're gonna go back to the B string. We're gonna pull off 15 to 12. And 14 to 12 on the G. Over to 14 on the D. And then back to 12 on the G. So. From there we have this. So I kind of kind of sliding into this 14th fret on the D string, rolling over to 14 on the G, and then 13 on the B. So up to the 15th fret there on the B. Then 12 on the high E string. And then there's 15, 14, 15, 14 on the high E. And then, so that last lick right there was a 12 on the D, 13 on the B, 14 on the high E string, and then up to 17, 15, and then 14, kind of, you can do like a half step in, release, over to 17 on the B. So. All right, then we're gonna kind of slide down into the next phrase, which sounds like this. So kind of slide down to low E and then to a quick hammer from five to seven on the A. So. Then just slide from five to seven on the D string. Then up to nine and 10. And then grab 12 on the G. And then slide from 10 to 12 on the D. And grab 14 on the G. And then slide from 12 to 14 on the D. And grab 16 on the G. And from there. So from that 16. Pick it and then pick it again and slide up to 17. Over to 15 on the B. Hammer on 17. Back down to 15 and then. Then you're gonna slide down from 16 to 14 on the G and pick 12 twice on the G. All right, next phrase. All right, so we're gonna start this lick here at the 12th fret on the B. To 10, 12, 10 on the B, over to 9 on the G, and uh, 10 on the D string. And then I have 10 on the A string. I'm gonna reach over and grab this with my index because it's gonna set up the next thing, next thing up here. So it's kind of an awkward lick. Sorry. So after you've got that 10th fret there on the uh, A string, jump up here to the 14th fret with your middle finger on the low E, then 12 on the D, 
14 on the G and uh, 15 on the B. From there, we're going to go 12, 14 on the D, and then 12 on the B, and 14 on the high E string. And then I think he slides up at the very end. And then we have this little kind of classic Eric Johnson ascending arpeggio type lick, um, which is going to be the 14th fret there on the D string, 17 on the I'll talk, I'll talk about how to pick this in a second. Pretty straightforward, but uh, 14 on the D, 17 on to 17, and then 16 on the G, 15 on the B, hammer on 17, 15 on the high E, and then 19. So how I'm picking that, I'm going to start with an upstroke on this 14 on the D, then I'm going to sweep across this. 17, 16, 15. And when I get to that B string, I'm going to hammer on the 17th fret. And then I'm going to go over and pick an upstroke on this 15 on the high E, and then downstroke on the 19. So it, nah, it, EJ's got those really kind of, it makes, really makes that flow. And it's, it's, it flows because we have our sweeps, and we also have alternate picking going on there. Um, and he, he times them all the same. And it's got this perfect amount of little palm muting on it, so it sound, everything sounds even. So you can't tell what's swept, what's picked, or whatever. So it's, it has that very flowing quality about it. And, and that's kind of how you choose it. And he's also doing hammer-ons in there. So it all kind of goes. If you can create that very evenness across the thing, everything's timed evenly. Um, Instead of doing, you know, it's kind of, everybody rushes the sweep, but if you just kind of time everything out together, it kind of really, um, it's a very cool sound lick from there. All right, now this next lick is probably the hardest lick. When I listen to this next lick, it, it almost sounds like, because things are skipping around, positions are jumping around so much, I'm like, man, this has to be like an edit thing like he probably not I'm, I'm sure he could play this stuff but it's just like it's such an awkward thing to play I don't it's it's weird to think that somebody actually intentionally wrote it like that it's like it, to me it feels like uh, it, there's little little parts in it that are are so skip around and really awkward even for and very unique to Eric's playing that I, I don't really hear a lot that you almost feel like it's kind of like couple cool things that he liked and he kind of pieced together. I don't know how it was done, uh, but I'll, I'll show you how, it's, how, to, how to play it, it but it's going to be the awkward, most awkward piece in the thing. So now, we, if you really kind of want to detail what's going on here, we have this, it kind of has that opening lick. So the whole thing, I wanted to do it kind of slow. So that's kind of looking, you can tell right there, there's, there's just a lot of awkward skiffs and, sh and shifts there. Um, and to get everything sounding exactly like he's doing it, it's, it's really strange. So anyway, so it kind of starts with that kind of thing. You hear him go all the way down to this D, which can be played here. But then you hear an obvious slide from this note, this note, to that. So I'm going to play that note here instead of here. And you would think he did this, but then he'd have to roll over and he wouldn't have that slide. But you hear, so I'm thinking he's staying here. So we have this. And then we have the, the rest of the lick. So I'm going to do this here. We have here 15, hammer, hammer on 17, pull back up to 15 on the high E, then play. 17, 15 on the B. Then we have one of those little mini sweeps. So we're gonna go over to 17 on the G, downstroke into another downstroke at the 17th fret rolled over onto the B string. Then we're gonna go straight, straight down the pentatonic. So we have seven, after we roll to that 17 on the B, go down to 15, then 17, 14 on the G, 17, 14 on the D, over to uh, 17 on the A. Now I did that with that finger because I gotta come back and grab this. 
that's awkward. And it's kind of weird that he would actually, I haven't really seen him do that kind of thing. So it's kind of, that's why I think it's like, is there an edit there? But anyway. Like that, if you want to make a sound of the recording. So we, after you hit this 17 on the A, come to the 17 on the B and slide down to 15. Now we're in the 12th position. And we have that. Now, once again, this is, you can do this with like a, a reverse roll, so you're kind of smushed and then you come back up. I like to use my pinky on top, so I'm kind of avoiding that roll. What, whatever you like to do, but the notes are gonna be 15 on the B, 12 on the high E, and then 15 on the high E, and then back over to 15 on the B. So, it's, so when you get to that 12 on the high, the 15 on the high E, back to the 12 on the B, pull off 15 to 12 on the B, over to 14 on the G. So it is. So after you get to there, so well, you go after you get to here, you're gonna go back to the 15th fret and just do a descending 12, 15, 12, pull off, 14 on the B, 14, 12, pull off on the G to 14 on the D. So we have this. So you can do it, but that top note, that's just like a roll back over or pinky. All right, now another very awkward. So this right here, very awkward shift. We're gonna play 15 on the high E, then 14. So with your pinky, both notes, pull off to 10, over to 10 on the B. Then you're gonna pull off 12 to 19 on the G, and then 12 on the D. Then you're gonna pull off 11 to nine on the G, and nine to seven on the G. Over to nine to seven on the D, you're gonna do that pull off twice. From here, if you do that pull off twice, nine on the A, slide down to seven, pull off to five, and then over to seven on the low E, and then open low E, so it is. So that's the tough lick. You gotta put those three things together and you've got that lick. But like I said, you have to really break it down like that. Um, but once you practice each one individually, then you kind of put the whole thing together and it's a little bit easier, but very, very awkward. All right, next, the rest of it. All right, so we'll stop there before we get to the hybrid picking. So we're gonna play, pull it off uh, 12 to 10 on the High E, then 12, 13 on the B, and then, then, so then you play 10, 8, pull off to 7, over to 10 on the B. Then you're gonna hammer um, 12 to 10, uh, sorry, 10 to 12 on the B string. And then he starts doing that kind of unison thing again, so I have to, Kind of deceivingly. So that's sliding into the 16 on the B, I'm sorry, on the G, over to 13 on the B, and then slide into 17, to, I know you just came from, but sliding into it on the G string, over to 15 on the B, and then that note you just came from, sliding into that on the G, and then um, 17 on the B, 19, 15 on the high E, and 19 on the high E string. So, so you see how that hit that note twice on the B string, I might have missed it. All right, and then we get to the, so 
So I'll do that, that 15 on the high E, 19 on the B, and then that a couple times on that 15 on the high E again. And then we go back into the hybrid picking that's very similar to the, in the intro. So that's like the one in the intro, except you're just picking across those arpeggios once. So... So we're gonna start with that hybrid pick the top note, of course, and then 19 on the B, top note, 19 on the G, top note, 19 on the D, top note, 17 on the D, 17 on the G, remember all top note between each one, then 17 on the B. So that's across three strings. Then the two string version of that, which is gonna be 19 on the B, 19 on the G, 17 on the G, um, 17 on the B, and back to the top note, and then we are going to go back to the 19 on the B string, just kind of start this little, little ascending melody. goes 19 on the B, after the hybrid picking is over, 19 on the B, 15 on the high E, 17, 19, slide up to 20, and then back down to 19. So. And then we're going to end it with this really cool. So that's going to be hammering 14 to 15 on the A string. Then play 14, 17 on the uh, D to uh, 16 on the G, 15 on the B, 17 on the B. And then... So that is, that's going to be 13, 16 on the D, then 14, 17 on the G, on the G, then 16, 17 on the B, then 16, 17 on the high E, 19, 20, and then you're going to bend it. Now he's playing this uh, this part on uh, 22 fret Gibson. So he might have that 20 fret, up, 20 second fret up here, but I'm gonna bend to it, and that sounds great too. All right, then we get to um, the last chorus of the song. So the solo is over, and we have this. Back to the uh, little main riff again. So it's pretty similar. We're going to start the same melody. I'm sorry. Then from there, we're going to have this kind of be in the middle of the riff, kind of second time. It's going to do this. You're going to have to the. You get down to the 16, 12, 12. You're gonna slide 16 to 14. Back to that 12 on the D, but then. So he starts taking that uh, the melody up an octave. So that starts from a, a bend at the 15th fret on the B. And then grab that 12, the unison of it on the high E string. And then you can do a pre-bend at the 14th fret on the G string. Or at least back down to the 12, pull off the 12. And then you're gonna bend up that 14 again, over to the 12 on the B. Then 15 on the B, 12 on the high E string. And then he's gonna do that unison trick again. Come back and grab, you hear that note twice, but one's here and one's up there. So, so after you get that, after you get that 17 on the B, then climb up the high E string 14, 15, 17, and 19, and then we have the melody up high. So 
So that's going to be 20 fret, 20th fret on the high E string, then 17 on the B, and 17 on the high E string. Slide down to 19 from 20, 20. And then you're going to play 15 on the B, 15 on the high E string, then 19, down to 17. Then 15 on the B, 14 on the high E, 17 on the high E, and then back to 15 on the B. Then back up, 14, 15, 17 on the high E, slide into 19. And then play 15 on the B, 15 on the high E string, slide down from 19 to 17. And then you play 15 on the B, 14 on the high E string, and then kind of of that, which is 15 a couple times on the high E string, pull off to 14, 17, 15 on the B, down to 16 on the G. So this. Then, so he just did the melody once up an octave, and then he starts it back over again. Um, and then the normal register. But he only gets that far to when he gets to that note that's at the 12th fret on the G, and then he hit this. And it's a quick little sweep there. He's, uh, he dives into Ingve world for just a brief moment. Um, and you could hit, it could be an open D, but it sounds like he has a little vibrato on it. So I'm gonna do it like, just kind of get down there and just grab this. So, so he does this, he has this 14th fret on the high E string, Hammer on 17, pull back off to 14. Then play, then sweep across the 15 on the B and 14 on the G. And then just jump down and grab that. Or like I said, you can, you can do the open D or whatever. I like to go, go down and just grab that 10th fret. And then we're, so, and then it's the same ending of the normal chorus. All right, from there, it takes us back to the kind of the main riff reprise with a couple fills thrown in right towards the end of the song. All right, so that right there is pretty similar. So is this the main riff? second time back up through it when you get to that fifth fret on the uh, B that's when you're gonna stop and you're gonna throw this in a little melody which is the uh, seventh fret there on the G pick eight a couple times on the high E string pull off to seven over to eight on the B and then play ten on the high E Back to the riff. Basically one time through all the way. The melody up. And then end it hitting that top note. And then it goes into the outro section. So the outro section is just like kind of a big, kind of uh, unaccompanied kind of cadenza thing again um, to end the track. So let me play through that for you real quick and then I'll try to play it over note. So this one's uh, tricky too. It's one of the trickiest licks because it's got a lot of skipping and the picking is a little bit odd, but we're getting... <laughs> kind of break it down kind of how I'm doing it and how I kind of digest the whole thing. So we're gonna start with a bend at the 18th fret on the B string. And then we're gonna roll from 15 on the high E string to 15 on the B. Back to 17 on the B, and then back to uh, 15 on the high E. So just for like picking for me, it's just easy for me to just kind of drag the pick across the strings. Just go, uh, just kind of do an up, up, and then down, down. From there, so from, uh, 
I'm gonna do a, play the seven, uh, the 20th fret, I'm sorry, up top. Pull off, I mean slide down at 19, and then pull off to 15. Over to 17 on the B, and then I'm, then I'm gonna roll over and grab the 17 on the high E string, and pull off to 15, sorry. So it is. Sorry. So after you did pull off from 15 to I mean, from 17 to 15, back to the 17 on the B, back to 15 on the high E, and slide down to 14. So so far. From there, you're gonna play 15. I mean, sorry, 17, 15, 13 on the B. I'm doing that with these fingers. Now the reason why is that I kind of, uh, I'm just getting my pinky ready to jump down here. And I don't know, it gets a little bit crowded otherwise. That's just the way I like playing it. Depends on the size of your fingers, I guess. From there, after that 17, 15, 13, I'm gonna jump back here. So we have this. So you're gonna pull off. 14 to 10 on the high E, over to 13 on the B string, and then you're gonna pull off twice, 12 to 10 on the high E. And then I'm gonna get back to some picking. And that right there is gonna be 13, 12, 10 on the B, and 12, 10 on the G, and then to a half step, half step bend, it's almost like a, Sound almost sounds like a pre-bend, but you get this very quick, quick bend from 11 up to 12. That's awkward to keep in tune. And then the last lick of the song is kind of a stretcher. So now he's a downward pick slanter so he likes to start everything with a downstroke when he's doing these odd no uh, even number of groupings you'll see me i reverse that i start with an upstroke because i am an upper pick slanter more comfortably for me um so if you're um it really depends on how you pick this lick if you start it with a downstroke if you if you tend to angle your pick downwards like he does like that. Uh, if you're like me, kind of upwards, start with an upstroke. Experiment. You might like one over the other. So the way I like to break this like down, because it's very quick too, is into two parts. So this first string, so it's just kind of a stretch from 7, 10, 12, back to 7 on the high E. And I connect it to the next lick by taking it to the first note on the B string, which is the 10th fret. So I practice that. What's awkward about this lick is it goes from, it's, uh, there's a, it's kind of playing four notes to just, to two notes across the string very quickly. So we have, we get to this note and then when I get here, I just practice this. Kind of the, kind of more kind of pentatonic bass, like two note per string. And that is gonna be 10-8 on the B, 9-7 on the G, 9-7 on the D, then you're gonna quickly hit the open G string. Now why he's doing that is because he gives him a chance to shift down and what, and grab this G power chord down here. So it is. So I'll practice each part. That. And then that, and then just put the two together. All right. So after you get that 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 G, you want to come back and grab this chord really quick. So what he's doing here is he has a thumb in the low E string, the third fret, fifth fret there on the D, open G. He's muting the A string with his thumb or his ring finger, or whatever. You have the open G, and then you're holding the third fret there on the B and the high E. So kind of. That G, open G, allows you to quick little split second to go and grab that chord. You let that ring.
drummer does his fill. Hit it again to end the song. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a monster, but we really needed to do this song justice and get through it in one video. And um, if you're still along, I appreciate it. If you like Eric Johnson's style, check out my course on Eric Johnson's playing. You'll see a link to my academy in the description below. You know I get only get full access to that course, but all of my courses from, like, there's a lot of technique courses in there. There's a lot of theory, ear training, guitar tone courses. I go live every weekend with academy members, so please go check that out. All right, so thanks for hanging out. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.